But let's face it, folks, most small businesses don't have that option. So what happens to them? Let's ask the president of the Marx Group, uh, small business expert Gene Marx. Uh, Gene, uh, you know, we saw last week 42 percent of small businesses can't fill available job openings. Uh, I yeah. think there's obviously too much money out there. These STEMI checks and enhanced employment benefits. Where does this take us? Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, Chuck Tabley, these are our problems now. You know, I mean, these are the problems back in 2019, and now they're exacerbated uh, now. Well, listen. Um, you know, first of all, if you're in the restaurant business, um, you can play the government at its own game. Um, and I hope your viewers are, you know, are paying attention to this. I mean, the there's something called the Restaurant Revitalization Fund, which I know you've talked about before. It's going to be opening its doors in a matter of like two to three weeks. And if you go to the SBA's website at sba.gov, I mean, Charles, if you're running a restaurant, this is a grant program, a $29 billion grant program, where basically you take your 2020 restaurant revenues, you compare it to 2019, and whatever the difference is, whatever you lost, you will get a grant for that amount, up to $10 million. And assuming you don't go out and buy a yacht with it, you can use that money for operating expenses like right. employees. Right. So a lot of my clients are like, listen, we're so, going to grab that money and we are going to be offering bonuses to potential employees to come on. That, that's one way that you can help fund you know, and, and maybe beat the competition to get good employees. Right. I got one other one, if I can jump in. Um, there's, sure. there's something called the Work Opportunity Tax Credit. And it's a, it's a credit from anywhere from $1,200 to $9,600 for the next four years for anybody that you hire that's been unemployed more than six months. So I've got some restaurant clients that are calculating that credit, and they're sharing it with potential employees and saying, listen, I'm getting a $2,000 credit for you coming on board. I'm going to give you a $1,000 signing bonus, 1000 bucks. I still get a thousand bucks off of my taxes. These are just ways that innovative restaurateurs are using to attract employees to their business. You know. Well, I'm glad they're helping out these restaurants. Uh, you know, we know hundreds of thousands. Of, it's maybe too late for them. But what about small business in general, though, Gene? Not not every business, can, you know, can do this. And you know, if you if you have a plumbing company or whatever it might be, uh, you know, we're talking about a mentality. Uh, that, to your point, it was already around before all of these checks started pouring in. How do we reverse that? It is very, very difficult for business owners. And the only thing that I can advise my clients outside of the restaurant world is um, you've got to do everything you can, Charles, to make your benefits as competitive as possible. There are some benefits that are relatively low cost, but are really attractive for employees. Work from home is one thing. I mean, if you're able to offer it, yeah. it's pretty much standard, right? That's what we've been doing. You'd be surprised at how many business owners are still resisting against doing that, and they're losing good employees You know, if they don't do that. They can also offer right, 401k right. plans as well, retirement plans. I know there's a cost to some of this, but you have got to keep up with the larger corporations that are taking your employees. It's really a big challenge right. for us this year. You know, you know, this week, uh, ProPublica, their website, uh, became a real popular destination on social media. If you get a chance to look at some of these memes, I mean, because you can drill down and see who, find out anyone, your neighborhood, your town, who got these loans. And, well, of course, we found yeah. a whole lot of dubious applications and loans. I think uh, most famously might be a D.C. pastor who was just charged with using one and a half million dollars of a PPP loan to buy luxury cars. And, and now they're talking about, you know, giving these loans out to, to businesses that are involved in bankruptcy. Uh, you know, the PPP loans, are, where, where are they going? Are, are you okay with the direction they're heading in? i got to tell you something. Um, I think it was a very successful program, and I give a lot of credit, particularly to Senator Rubio, who started this. He was one of the, the writers of this from the very beginning, and a lot of the congressional Republicans that got behind it. Listen, Charles, they had to get this program out there pretty quick. They're dealing with a very small agency, the SBA. I mean, they're pretty underfunded and lower staffed. There was going to be fraud. This kind of stuff's going to happen. And listen, you know, people like us in the media, like, we, you know, we love to highlight the guy that buys the yacht, you know, with his PPP money. But over in effect, almost a trillion dollars was given out to businesses um, for the most part to really help sustain them through all of this. There's still 40 billion left. So there's still some changes to make. Right. But I predict that right. the PPP model that you're seeing, that's going to be the model of stimulus and aid to small businesses for the foreseeable future. I really see that. Uh, hey, listen, I, I think it was successful as well, but you got to admit, if you get a chance to go on social media, just check out some of the memes. <laughs> They're pretty funny. Hey, Gene, always yeah. appreciate your expertise, my friend. Thanks a lot.